Hey, and welcome back to the musings of an old maverick. Welcome back to the archives of my life. You know, when I was a young, struggling executive in the corporate world, two things used to happen. The team lead would always emphasize, probably for the ears of the HR or the human resource department, that people should not work more than nine hours a day, they should take one hour lunch breaks, it helps one's potential, it helps one to grow one's efficiencies as an executive and so on and so forth. But the second thing what used to happen was, on the other hand, they would start glorifying all those executives who worked for like 12 hours, 14 hours. Most of those executives, let me tell you, through, throughout my entire career of almost four decades in the corporate world, most of those executives who tended to work for such long hours never reached the pinnacle of their careers, simply because they burnt out much too soon. But then, hey, I did. I reached the pinnacle of my career. And I never had to work more than nine hours ever. So what was my secret? Let's talk about it. The secret really is very, very practical and very logical. Yes, there was a time when I used to work 12 to 14 hours and literally burn up and then take weekends away from everything so that you know I could possibly rejuvenate, re-engineer my mind. Oh, what a lot of nonsense that I had to keep doing just because I was burning out working so many hours. And then I realized one thing, one thing really, really important. Whatever I do between 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. the next morning, it will directly influence whatever I do between 9 a.m. in the morning and 6 p.m. in the evening the next day. Which meant that how I spend that time from 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. will directly influence my levels of efficiency, my, 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 my potential as an executive, uh, whatever have you. The next day between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I developed six habits and I must share that with you. Habit number one, I would spend very little time on social media. 30 minutes to the best, 30 minutes to the best, whatever, newspapers, magazines, but not more than 30 minutes. In fact, during my time, we didn't have the kind of social medias you have today, Facebook and LinkedIn and all that. But even today with all that around me, I don't spend more than 30 minutes in that time gap between 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. the next day on social media. News especially. See, somebody else's disaster isn't your concern because there's nothing you can do about it. So why turn your mind space influenced with disasters and then it itself becoming a disaster? So don't spend more than 30 minutes. That's what I told myself. The second important habit is I switched off work and actually socialized. Not the kind of socializing people do today, exclusively on LinkedIn or Facebook and all imaginary friends. But actual socializing, moving out, meeting people, having a drink, playing, playing badminton, playing some, playing some games, anything, but physically connecting. And that's very important because the more you phys physically connect, the better your network 
grows and for any successful professional, you sure do need a very, very powerful network. And that's what was my second habit. My third habit is, was, and still is in fact, I became a voracious reader. Reading empowers you. Because in every book, there are thoughts expressed by an author, which can be so fulfilling if that content is reaching out to a certain pain that you are facing. Now, isn't that practical? I need to, I have a, I have a certain challenge. I need a solution. And books, several books can give you so many wonderful solutions. And in the process, you get very empowered. You get very knowledgeable. Your intellect grows and you become a better conversationalist. The next important habit of mine was I built up this habit of meditating every morning. It was so, so important because it stabilized my mind. It, it made me control my my mind to a very large extent so that you know my mind didn't go chatting around like a monkey and there are so many wonderful ways to meditate well I I did a very simple thing I just would just sit and follow my breath that's all that is really required and the peace that you experience at that point in time the serenity in your mind and body the beautiful traverse within that's a total different story a story that you can only understand if you start meditating another very important thing that i used to do always after my meditating was working out i have been working out for practically 54 years of my life non-stop whether i was traveling in india whether i was traveling abroad Wherever I went, I would be carrying my kit with me. Because that brings in the balance, both in your mind and in your physical existence. It builds up your energy. It builds up your immunity system. Oh, there are so many, so many advantages of regularly working out. And one of the most important things I used to do and still do, and this is a very, very important tip for you. Immediately after my meditation, I would spend just another 10 minutes looking at myself and whatever I had achieved in comparison to the past. You know, we, are, we always spend so much of time comparing ourselves to the Joneses. Oh, I don't have this they have it. Oh, this is where he's gone or she's gone. I still have to reach there. And in this process, we completely forget that there is so much that we've already done in life. And we, since we don't look at it, we never reflect. We don't have the awareness. And therefore, you don't ever respect or in gratitude to what you've actually achieved. And that's something I've been looking at constantly every day. I look at how I started my life as a career, what I started with, what I was, have become at that point in time while I am reflecting. And every reflection of mine, I could measure my progress. And the more I measured it, the more I fell in love with myself for the simple reason that that was really me. I was the guy who managed to bring in this progress, evolve this amazing surroundings around me. It's only when you begin to love yourself will you ever be able to love others. It's only when you begin to respect yourself for what you are and what you've done for yourself and for the people who are connected with you and beyond. You will learn to respect people. The more gratitude you have for the universe and God, for all that you've been able to achieve 
with his strength the more you be grateful to people who have also journeyed along with you and then yes finally you must get to sleep 8 hours that is very important if you are a deep sleeper 5 hours is good enough but if you are a sleeper who tends to wake up in between for short breaks you need to have 8 hours so this actually was my mantra of 6 to 9 versus 9 to 6. And let me tell you, it worked wonders for me. It really did. Because it was this practical set, these practical set of habits, which took me from the foothills of the mountain right up to the summit. And I'm sure it'll work for you. Give it a shot or whatever. So this is Anand Nair signing off. Thank you so much once again for being here. And please, please, please subscribe to my channel so that every time I bring out a new video for you, you get to see it straight away. You take care. I'll see you soon. Ciao for now.